What is up for the Nation Podcast listeners? This is your host, Mike Wojcik, and we are on episode 16, and we brewed up something nice for you. This podcast is specifically for all my beer drinkers out there. I'm talking craft beer lovers and even you, craft beer haters. I had two incredible women from Savannah River Brewing Company here in Augusta, Georgia on. That's Taylor Reynolds and Ann Wolstadter. These ladies gave me an awesome peek behind the curtain that is the craft beer industry. We did a taste test with three different beers. They discussed the inner workings behind what it's like to work for a brewery, as well as kind of what the culture of the microbrewery or craft beer scene is. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get straight to the episode. That is recording. We are now live. Uh, Taylor and thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate the time. Um, I know you guys are busy, I'm sure, with literally running a brewery. So uh, why don't you guys take a little bit and just introduce yourselves. Taylor, you want to go first? Uh, sure. Um, my name is Taylor Reynolds. Uh, I work with Savannah River Brewing Company. I'm the assistant top room manager, and I help with some of the marketing aspects of things. I also teach the beer yoga classes there. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into that because that's a very interesting topic and how yeah. they meld together. Yeah. So, Anne, how about you? Uh, I'm Ann Wallstotter. Um, I am the head of R&D for the brewery, uh, and I'm a certified Cicerone as well. So. That R&D in a brewery, like, people can only, like, imagine what that entails. It sounds so cool. So we'll definitely get into that. And I also just noticed you have hops for earrings right now. We both do. We both do. Oh, you both do? <laughs> yeah. And Those are so cool. <laughs> we didn't plan that either. No, that's so cool. I was like, wait a second, that looks familiar. Yep. <laughs> are you an IPA person? I'm a just about every type of beer person. Yeah. So mood and time of year and all that. So Awesome. Well, uh, why don't we first kind of talk about why beer, why get into the craft beer industry? Uh, Taylor, again, if you want to go first. Um, yeah. So I was in, uh, I used to live in Aiken, and, uh, which is something we also have in common about craft beer. And um, I used to live in Aiken, and I was living downtown, and Word on the street was the cool place to work was, back in the day, Aiken Brewing Company. Uh, and long story short, ran into uh, a couple friends that worked there. They were looking for somebody. I got into it. And as it turns out, craft beer is a pretty cool place to work. <laughs> yeah. So um, I took a break for a little while, uh, worked for a chiropractor, became a yoga teacher, did all that, and really just enjoyed the culture and started at the brewery um, as the yoga teacher. And... Tried to stay that way, just to kind of stay out of sort of F and B. I thought I was done, and uh, fell in love with the culture in Savannah River, and now it's my entire life. So yeah, F and B is food and bit food, food and, and beverage. beverage. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Just to make sure, I'm not really in the hospitality side of the house. Yeah. So, uh, Anne, how about you? How did you get into beer? Uh, so the, the the funny story is, my dad started home brewing when I was four years old, so I I started brewing when I was four years old. Heck yeah, no age <laughs> uh, limits. So it was a uh, you know, when you were real little, it was, all right, here, stir this. And then, it was, yeah. all right, well, let's teach you how to measure things like you would in a kitchen, except I'm making beer. Uh, <laughs> and then I was, uh, after college and that, I was waitressing and looking to get out of F&B. And a homebrew supply shop was opening up in town. Uh, so I applied, and I was his only employee for two years. And then I got, when his store closed, I had offers to come work brew professionally so like oh yeah okay i guess i just kind of fell into this and this is awesome uh how do you is there like specific certifications that you need to become a, a brew a brewmaster is that like the official title so there's it, it, to call yourself a brewmaster you do kind of have to go through a course but to be a brewer you don't have to have any certifications um some companies want you to have some mm -hmm. um Others are just like, hey, you, you've homebrewed for, you know, three batches. We'll bring you on and you can help on packaging days and we'll we'll train you from there. Um, yeah. So that's, the brewing industry is really welcoming in that regard. As, you know, you don't, certifications are great. They're wonderful to have, but they're not absolutely required. Necessary for the job. That's cool. Is it hard to, like, go from homebrewing and then brewing at that scale? Like, or is it just... Because for me, I would get a little intimidated seeing a huge vat. I mean, y'all have like how many of those 
ferment is that what they are fermenters yeah so fermenters we have seven 60 barrel fermenters right now Jeez. and 130 um our our brew system is 30 barrels and so like you know your your big kegs of that are 31 gallons that's just a half barrel yeah so uh yeah there there's a lot and your standard homebrew kit is five gallons right um so which is like what 40 bottles roughly uh, 4850. 4850, yeah. Like 12 that's, ounces. That's what yeah. these are here. We, just for the people listening, we have some beers that we're going to taste a little bit later on. Uh, really looking forward to that personally. <laughs> but um, you mentioned that you are a Cicerone. Could you kind of explain what a Cicerone is? Am I saying that right, Cicerone? Yeah, Cicerone. C- and then, like, how would that compare to a sommelier? So a Cicerone is the beer equivalent of a sommelier. So what a sommelier is for wine, a Cicerone is for beer. Mm-hmm. Um. I am a level two. Um, it goes, you know, certified beer server, um, certified Cicerone, advanced, and then master. Um, you have to know history of different styles. You have to know all of the details about brewing uh, and serving different styles. You have to know um, any kind of off flavors potential. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the the fun one that I, I really love is uh, food and beer pairings. So everyone thinks, oh, well, if I'm going to go to a, a fancy dinner, I want wine to pair with that particular meal. Right. Actually, because of the cooking methods, beer is more appropriate to pair with just about every food. It's better than wine. Huh. Uh, because the cooking methods that go are involved with making beer yeah. are the same that you'd use during cooking. So those flavors meld a lot better. Yeah, that's really interesting. What do you like look at when you're trying to pair a beer with food? Is there like styles that go better, like go with one another better? Uh, uh yes, but it's also do you want to have something be very similar or do you want to have a nice contrasting? So mm, like I see what you're saying. Like a really nice chocolatey stout is great with cheesecake and raspberries. Like with a raspberry topping yeah. on it, because just uh, you get that chocolate covered raspberry kind right, of right, feel right. between the two. Oh snap! Now my mind's going in circles here. So Taylor, you said that you started as a yoga instructor with beer. Who came up with that idea at first? Was it Savannah River Brewing Company, or did you come to them and say, "Listen, guys, I'm only going to come on the team if I get to Namaste a little bit on Saturday mornings." So actually, the way that it went down, which is super just like the universe, just like throwing something in my lap. Um, I was working at uh, the yoga center, which is unfortunately no longer around. It's uh, in North Augusta over on West Avenue. It just got bought by uh, another person who wants to make it a yoga studio. So that's good news. But um, I was been teaching there for years and Mm -hmm. they knew that I had previous experience in a brewery. And one day they get a phone call and they're like, do you have anybody that would be interested in teaching a yoga class? And I was like, you know, I was, I'll never forget where I was. I was at Metro uh, having an Irish coffee, like, Monday at noon, which, by the <laughs> way, Irish coffees at Metro are amazing. But I almost dropped my phone. I was so excited when my, my studio owner, who the type of yoga that I t- originally taught and still teach is very traditional and very ethically based. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they were like, I was like, is this even okay with you guys? And, uh, yeah, they said it was fine, so... We did a test run like the middle of December, almost four years or four years ago this week, actually. Um, and I showed up and I had no idea the brewery was so new. They'd just been able to legally uh, prohibition and it is what we call it. <laughs> but they were just able is beer laws changed in Georgia where you could serve a pint. So they were looking for ways to increase revenue inside their tap room. So not an original idea. Um, people have been doing it. Uh, Asheville, I think. I don't know where it originates from. But it was something that started in craft beer culture. And it honestly is a smart marketing move. Like, especially as a new brewery, you're going to look for ways to get people in the door. And then hopefully you do a good enough job that they'll come back, right? Right. So this is just their way to, of appealing to a wellness community. Because um, obviously, usually wellness community people, people that are involved in the wellness community, um, tend to be pretty responsible drinkers too. So I think that they were just like looking for inviting good people into the brewery. So... I uh, did that, and I started teaching yoga there. Uh, like I said, we did a trial run December, January of that year. We had, like, something like 70 people showed up one week. It was crazy. It was a hit. The news reported on it. Nobody could believe that there was, like, this obscure thing, beer yoga, that had happened. And we called it Brew Year, Brew You. 
And I was like, it's a realistic approach to, you know, your New Year's <laughs> resolutions <laughs> kind of thing. So yeah. I sold it to people. And um, my background as a yoga teacher is actually a very inclusive style of teaching. Anybody can come to the class, uh, regardless of skill level, age, anything. Like, I actually prefer to teach beginners because I want to give them a safe space to come and just kind of explore yoga. It can be really yeah. daunting. So the beer kind of helps add a level of, uh, like you said, Comfort. casual. Yeah, it's casual and it's chill and, you know, yeah. it's a little bit safer to try. Dip your yeah. toes in the water. So. What I was going to ask this a little bit later on when we talk about the craft beer industry, but you kind of naturally brought it up. Is there some similarities? Because when I think of like the yoga community and then I think of the craft beer community, I feel like there's definitely some overlap in the characteristics of the people within that. I think it boils down to mindfulness. Um, I think that if you're going to go and spend more money than you would on like a Michelob Ultra, if you're going to go spend, what, 650 for a low level beer at our place, you're going to pay more attention to the way that it tastes. Yeah. And you're not going to maybe drink as many either, which because you're going to sit and you're going to enjoy it. So it's less about the beer and more about the people that you're sharing with it, it with and the experiences. And I think that yeah. you take the product. I'm not trying to take away from our beer because our beer is fantastic. But I do think that the beer is a means to creating a culture. And Anne can speak more on the history of beer, but this is not a new concept. People used to vote in breweries way yeah. back in the day like it was a community really? meeting center originally so when you think about it in that term yeah absolutely everybody wants community whether that's inside yoga and wellness or craft beer or both like not only do we have yoga we have run club run club people come to beer yoga and run and vice right versa and, right you know so. yeah i think that you kind of hit the nail on the head there and that's one of the reasons that i love the craft beer culture per se is it's a social thing like you're there and you're just seeing new people and you're talking to them. It's like beer is one of those social drinks where it's like, I mean, how many presidential campaigns you hear like, this is the guy that you'd want to have a beer with. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it just kind of seems like that community based just from the get go, which is really cool. So yoga came first then to you or yoga, no? Yoga came first. Yeah. Um, I taught so I was so stoked with the community of Savannah River in the beginning I was so scared I didn't want to mess it up so yeah, I was yeah, like yeah. walking on eggshells like all right I really wanted to work there from day one but the yoga thing was just yoga was home for me at the moment and mm -hmm. I was really nervous about losing that or di like diluting that and diluting my relationship with the company if I came on full-time so I actually came on with the company full-time uh, I started in December of the year before and then that August and I just started bartending. Uh, I think it started with one shift a week. And then slowly it bled into it being my full-time job. And I could not be happier. I met my husband at, at the brewery. Yeah. And we're married now. And it's pretty cool. Like, yeah. So yoga came first. Um, and then, like I said, I was just kind of like, I love it here. One day it was, of course, after a beer or two. Yeah, my yeah. old tap room manager, I was like, <laughs> I really want to work here. And she was like, all you have to do is ask. We love you. Yeah. Come on. And so it's been... I guess three years, almost three years with the company. Like if you count like the mm -hmm. full time stuff, but four with yoga. So wow, I've been a part of the family for a hot second. Yeah, they, they welcomed me with open arms. When you teach the yoga, is it like now? Do you add your own flavor to it? Like, do you feel like you have ownership over it as much so now? Where you're, I don't even know how yoga really goes. I'm gonna be honest with you. No, you're fine. That's a good question. Um, so they one thing I can say about Spinner from day one, they were like, "You're the yoga expert." We don't like. What do you need from us? Right. So they facilitated me from day one. They, I always had complete ownership. I always felt like I had complete ownership over the yoga that I was doing. My main concern was uh, yoga is a very special place to me. Uh, in my early twenties, I was dealing with some mental health issues and got into yoga as a way to kind of figure all of that out. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, it seems a little dramatic to say that it saved my life, but it it really did. It mm -hmm. it move. It set my. It's a very clear trajectory where my life changed and I started making better decisions and better things came. That's awesome. um, as a result of that. So I was really careful at first. I, I have an issue with uh, a small issue. I just didn't want to like ruin something that was so sacred to so many people and yeah. just like cheapen it and dilute it. But I think that I see what you're saying now. Yeah. And so I went to a lot of mentors of mine and the thing that resonated with me most from one of my yoga mentors, she said, uh, whatever brings people to their mat. I was like, okay, got it. And ever yeah. since then, it's just my goal to get people practicing yoga and if I'm doing my job right they're gonna go home and roll out their mat too when things get hard that's generally why I teach yoga still yeah yeah how do you incorporate the beer into it we like don't. I was all right I was gonna say yeah. like is there a moment where, where you're like line. all right <laughs> yeah. folks nope. you're gonna bring the glass to your lips nope. like I don't you know yeah. 
So I start every class. I'm going to have to go and check it out. You should. Come really? through, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I start every class, and I basically just say, um, we're n- like, you don't need my permission to drink your beer. Uh, we're not going to use the beer as a prop. If you are in a posture and you can comfortably reach your beer and you'd like to consume it, cool. <laughs> just please respect yourself and those people around you. And that's yeah. generally how I handle it. And taken my class. Yeah, I've, I've taken the class. And you'll give cues once in a while of like, hey, if you're in this position – and you want to sip, now's a good time for you to take a sip. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, like, especially low to your own positions that we're going to be holding, like, for instance, like Pigeon, which is a hip opener. A lot of times you can tell my students we're all just kind of sitting there, like, awkwardly staring at each other. And I'm like, if you want to grab your beer, this is probably a good place to do it. And <laughs> they love it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. All right. Well, why don't we uh, get into some of these beers? Do you want, what one do you want to start with? I'll leave this up to you because you're the professional here. <laughs> um, so, we've got... There, uh, Hefeweizen yeah, there's... and a red ale, and then the one that we brought. I would say the Hefeweizen is the lightest, so we should probably start with that, and it's going cool. to be the, less, the least palate wrecker, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Um, I suggest we start with that one. All righty. Do you want to do the honors? I don't I don't know if there's like a secret way of doing this or... You got a bottle opener? Right here. Okay. I think <laughs> that is one. This, this Weizen beer or Hefeweizen, whatever this is... Um, this is the one I helped my father-in-law make. Okay. So nice. I, I had my hand in this one just a little bit. So I do like that you have the date on here. Was this a brewed on date or a bottled? Date? Bottled on. Bottled on date. Okay. Or okay. actually, I take that back. I think that that is when it was acceptable. So you, you bottled it a week before that, and that's when it was ready or something like that. So you have to, when you're home brewing, you have to bottle, and then normally there's carbonation that will happen inside the bottle, whether you add yes. sugar or you... Maybe bottle it a little early and fermentation's still happening. Um, so it's going to take a little bit to carbonate in there. Normally it's about two weeks. Yeah. So that date is when after the two weeks. So that was when it was so ready to drink. This is the, hey, this is carbonated. This is good. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. I. You know what? Good eye because I would have totally forgot. But yeah, so that's awesome. So this was, I see, March 28th of this year. So that's. Is that okay? Is her like expiration dates on beer? Um. So. Yes, yes and no. So beer doesn't Whoops. really necessarily go bad. Sorry. Um, you do lose, start losing some significant amounts of flavor after uh, six months or so. Mm-hmm. Um, at least like for our, the brewery, we will go out into the market and we will, if we see beer that's out there over six months, we will buy it back. Um, well. So. We do. Uh, it's just a good standard practice. Now, some beers um, can age. It all kind of depends on the style. Um, your IPAs, you typically do not want to age. Um, the hops just dissipate so fast. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, a nice Russian Imperial Stout, I've had some that are five years old that are just amazing. Um, so it, it kind of depends on the beer. But really? good good practices you want to drink within six months. Six months? All right. All righty. Um, so, so when you pour a beer, you pour it initially, um, and you immediately want to smell it. Don't look at it. Smell it. <laughs> so I kind of cheated already on that. What are we so, thinking? I have a little bit of a sinus issue, so my smell is not the greatest at the moment, but I get some really malty. Um, is that characteristic of maybe, this type of beer? Maybe a um, little caramel. So I would... I would Looking at it and what I'm smelling, I would call this more of a Dunkelweizen than a Hefeweizen. Your Hefeweizens are going to be um, almost a straw or a yellow. Um, this is a little darker. This is more of an amber, mm-hmm. um, which is just a Dunkelweizen means dark wheat beer, All right. essentially. So this, looking at it and smelling it, that's what I would categorize it as. Um, but it's it's nice and hazy like a Weizen you would expect to be. Um, don't see any weird little floaters or anything, so that's always a good sign. Um, seems to be a really good head. Um, a lot of home brewers have carbonation issues, and it this seems to be holding up quite nice. So, take cool. a step here. And do you also want to touch on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to swallow and then... So oh, there's a certain way there's to a swallow? Certain way. <laughs> well, it sounds very strange, but there is a way. So... When you do wine tastings, you don't normally actually swallow, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're supposed to taste it, and you, like they'll tell you to spit it out or whatever. Um, beer, you have to swallow it. There are taste perceptors at the back of the throat that you cannot access if you don't swallow. 
Um, so you have to swallow the beer. Um, you can take um, just, there's different ways to smell a beer as well. You don't necessarily want to stick your nose at it and do a big whiff. Um, you will dry out your nostrils that way and not be able to smell much. You want to do like a little drive-by. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's hard to just describe without a visual on that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. it's, you just kind of wave it under your nose and that's, that's the drive-by sniff. Um, you can swirl it and again, kind of drive by and you'll get different, uh, different smells that way. Um, if you do find yourself, your nose just getting tired out, you are, unless, you know, it's a really sweaty day, uh, you are neutral smell wise to yourself. So you can just go and smell your arm and you reset your senses at that point. Yeah. Um, the other kind of fun one, I don't know if this was maybe what you were talking about, uh, it was aspirating the beer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that wasn't, but I'm so glad you did that. Um, um, so, uh, like, you, you put a little bit on your tongue, and you kind of curl your tongue a little bit, and you inhale through your mouth, yeah. and that will that really opens up the flavors. I had some arms. practice. I had a sommelier on, so we were aspirating nice. it up. <laughs> oh, nice. I had... Um, what I was, it's orthonasal fraction, I always say it wrong, where you you take a sip and then you exhale as you yeah. open your mouth, right? You take so, a sip uh, with retro your mouth nasal. Retro, I see yeah. it every time. I'm trying, I'm trying to get my Cicerone slowly. <laughs> okay. and, we're we're yeah. eventually going to have all the staff of Cicerone. <laughs> well, I couldn't do it at this point, but let me, also I want to backtrack. She says level two Cicerone. That is extremely difficult to get like so her it's, certification it's is, like a master's yeah in i'm beer i meant to jump in <laughs> earlier and be Heck like yeah. just bt dub she's not going to tell you but that is extremely hard what how many women in the u.s it's like oh i i don't know right not now. anymore but like for a while it was like the Very number few. is extremely low for level yeah. two cicerone women and women in craft beer period but especially when it comes to um back of the house stuff and then you get to the level two cicerone and that's yeah typically a boy's game I so think like master cicerone there's only three maybe four women women yeah it's insane, that's insane. the higher you get that's next for you if yeah. you decide to uh next advance advance um, and then it's master and then it's master yeah there's like prerequisites to go in it like you have to be a level two for a certain amount of time um not not a certain amount of time um they do want you to have taken the exam within a couple within two years um, so at this point I would have to retake my sister own to go for my advance. Um, mm-hmm. I think I'm just past that date now. Oh, all right. Um, if, if I wanted to continue with it, um, I'm actually looking at going for the, um, potentially going into uh, the beer judge certification program. Um, so I could actually go, you know, you, you hear about all these beer competitions. Well, I, I'd be one of the judges for it. Heck so, yeah. um, I'm looking into that one next, uh, that's a career. That's an awesome <laughs> career. That is so cool to literally just judge beers. Well, that's that's the side gig. I'm yeah. still gonna be brewing. Yeah, yeah. So. so she just gets to like hang out at craft beer festivals and. That is awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, but I want to say so when you said like the maltiness, mm-hmm. when we were making this and adding all that stuff in, that was a hundred percent like the only thing I smelled. I was like, man, it just smells malty. Like it smells like that. Wheaty, yeah, you don't. You don't malty. really get the. Uh, the hops until much later. Like you might get some hops during the boil, uh, aroma wise, mm-hmm. but uh, and especially for a beer like this, um, it is very little on the hops. The style wants yeah. the malt to shine through and the yeast characteristics to shine. Yeah, yeah. I do think um, I do think it's like the dunkel mm-hmm. and it's fantastic expression of oh, the yeah. It's, yeah, it's really tasty. Very nice. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Good to know. I'll let him know. <laughs> the red ale is the my favorite one that he's done. It's a, I think it's the fat tire clone or something like that. That one came out insane. And the big difference is, uh, the red ale was steeped, grain steeped or something like that. Is that the right okay, terminology? Okay, so uh, depending on like what your homebrew method is, yes, yes. So he had like the cheesecloth with all the stuff and steeping it. Okay, and I think he the, added like a, any powder or syrup mm, during the boil. Or I don't was it think on all, this one. So that that's what would be a. Um, Depending on the exact process, that would be brew in a bag or all grain. Brew in a bag is all grain, but it's uh, equipment equipment limitations. Mm-hmm. So, yeah the uh, the Weizen beer had the liquid malt extract and okay. stuff like that. But I, I'm pretty sure that one, the red ale was, was done that, was explicitly. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's so like using using the extracts is kind of when I was working at the homebrew shop, I had equated it to like your your Betty Crocker uh, like brownie mixes. Yeah, it yeah. still makes good brownies, but it's it's the easier way of doing it. We get into all grain, like you're saying this this red ale was. Um, that's that's making it from scratch completely. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, I think you just have more control over it, and you can, you know, right. I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a, a brewer. Yeah, I thought about it. It's pretty cool. It's really cool stuff. Uh, I'd love to it's a get into home party. brewing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's exploding. The industry's yeah. exploding. Like, we just hired, we've made more hires in the back of the house this year. Maybe not as much as the front of the house because the front of the house is also growing, but it's like for the first time catching up. Like, yeah, yeah. And then everybody back of house now has home brewed at least at some point. Yeah. So. Is the most common home brew style like the uh, just the five gallon buckets? Like you boil, you transfer, let it ferment, transfer again, or whatever it is, and then bottle. Yeah, that's 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 the simplest. That's the least amount of equipment involved. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's the majority. Um, there are a bunch of local home brewers that are just like, they essentially have nano breweries in their garage or their <laughs> yeah. basement. Uh, they get homebrew club. Yeah, to those guys, they're like they've been doing it since like. Before, like way before it was cool. Yeah. So, like, we haven't actually advertised this yet, but we're talking about trying to get a homebrew club, like, through the brewery. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're, we're finalizing some details, but hopefully Augusta will have a, like, a, a place for homebrewers to meet and talk about ideas and, and learn from each other um, very soon. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited about that. That's awesome. All right, do we want to get into the red ale? Yes, Is there anything we got to do? Do we have to like wash these out or um, something? I would say maybe just a quick rinse on these. Um, yeah. Again, with us starting with the Hefeweizen, there's not going to be a whole lot of pungent uh, flavors uh, taking over, so it shouldn't be too bad uh, going from one to the next. Taylor, I meant to ask you, do you have a favorite beer? Or not a favorite beer, a favorite beer style. Uh, yeah, I love wheat beer. I like uh, Belgian Belgian beers, period. I'm, I have a soft spot for those. So um, Belgian-style wheat beers are typically... I fell in love with our Wolf Dog wheat beer originally. Mm-hmm. Um, and I really like... We have a Belgian Dubel, but like not just brewer, like Savannah River specific, but I really enjoy Belgian-style Dubels. Um, basically anything Belgian. I like the <clears throat> unfiltered, like... I like the thick beers. <laughs> like the thick... <laughs> Not even thickens as in Guinness. I like the wheat beers, so I want them to be like farmhouse style ales. I really like those. I like saisons. I like funky beers. Yeah, um, I'm a real big fan of uh, spontaneous fermentation style stuff. So yeah. the stuff that's, that's just fun, like put in a it's bottle hard to and do left. Augusta. <laughs> it's very hard to contain uh, when you get into like wild <laughs> fermentation and things like that. It's very hard to create a consistent product, right? And, for, and jump in if I'm wrong. Oh, ab- absolutely. So the the whole thing with spontaneous fermentation, it's. Uh, everything everything has yeast on it, but it's not necessarily the yeast that you want exactly. that's going to provide the flavors that you want. So, yeah, it's extremely uh, hard. And you're going to look for, like, super nano breweries to get that, like, OG-style, yeah. farmhouse-style uh, for When we had that yeah. massive ice storm a few years ago, there was, I, I, I want to say it was Orpheus, but I might be wrong. Uh, it, was, it was one of those uh, breweries in Atlanta that when we had that massive ice storm, there was like, this is our one and only chance to be able to do... Spontaneous. spontaneous fermentation in like downtown Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Uh, and it was a super limited thing, but I, it was just awesome that they were able to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my favorites that I've had like recently in the last six months is uh, a small batch release from Creature Comforts. It's called Smells Like Flowers. Um, we were at a company outing or <laughs> Savannah River sent the front of the house to Athens because it's clearly the worst place ever to work. <laughs> and we like got us an Airbnb and like we went around and just tasted beers and just kind of like hung out with each other and, and saw it just like did market research. Like how are they, do they have their merch up front in the back? How's their, cust- what's their style of customer service, whatever. And uh, creature, the, the manager at the time, and I forget his name. I wish I knew it. Um, came out and was like, Oh, y'all are with Savannah River and gave us like the Royal treatment. It was so nice. They did not have to do that. But he brought out this like small batch. It's called Smells Like Flowers, and it was a spontaneous uh, fermentation. It, it may not have been complete. Spo- I, I like don't know if it was like a true spontaneous, but it was it was funky. It was at least a like a wild. It smelled like flower. Strength. It's like that's what it's called. It was beautiful. It came in this gorgeous bottle, and um, yeah, he the the guy went out of his way to taste it for us, and I bought so much of that and took it home. <laughs> I still have some in my fridge because I want to see what happens. Yeah, nice. yeah. All right, well let, let's get into this one. 
Yeah, so this is the um, red ale you said. Um, and already, like, that, that is a beautiful red color on that. I really like the color on that. Um, again, head is lasting quite nicely. Lots of caramel notes on the aroma. Almost a little cherry, too. Am I the only one picking up cherry? I've got a little bit at the back. Which is kind of nice. I love finding random like surprises yeah. yeah. in beers. I definitely uh, smell, smell cherry. <laughs> I, I just have, like, it's so cool to have people on that, like, can pick that stuff up. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so impressive to me. But the thing is, like, I might not smell it, and then I'm going to taste it, and I'm going to be like, oh, there it is. Well, there's always the power of suggestion, too. Yeah. I, I mess with, uh, so right now I'm, ta- I'm teaching two of our uh, employees. We're kind of doing, like, a tasting class uh, every two weeks right now, and one's working towards its level two Cicerone. Um, the other one is interested, but she's more just wanting to improve her palate right now. So we, I'll once in a while, just throw out, yeah, I taste this. Just to see what they say. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, no, actually, I didn't taste that. I just wanted to see if you knew what you were doing <laughs> right now. I was like, power suggestion's a real thing. Right. Um, but no, I do get a little cherry notes on the aroma. But I don't I don't really taste it so much, which is always kind of fun. Yeah, I get it from the back as, after I swallow. Like, I can kind of smell it. But as soon as you said cherry, I like, and again, is it like, you know, confirmation bias? or? But right. I do think it's it's there. Some very nice kind of earthy hops. Do you happen to remember what hops were you using? Mm. No. No. Very earthy. I would be willing to bet Americanized English hops. So Mm -hmm. probably something from some a hop variety related to either Fuggles or East Cambodian. Yeah, is what I would guess. He. um, It was actually their their pandemic project. They learned how to home brew and make wine and all that. They actually made all the wine for my wife and I's wedding. So it's really, really cool. Um, But it's like this really cool uh, homebrew store in St. Cloud, Florida, which is down near Orlando. And they hooked him up and he just kind of goes in there and says, suggest a kit to me and brings it home and makes it. So, yeah, this one was my favorite out of all the ones that we've made so far. Well, he's made. Sorry. It's okay to take partial credit once in a while. (laughs) Yeah, I'm getting your name out there. All right. I've had to like people are like oh like da da like do you brew and I'm like no and then I like assist on brews and I'm like okay well I I don't I wouldn't call I wouldn't call it brewing but you also help with ideas for beers which is yeah. huge because like if I'm doing we should you know, have three small batches a week some weeks it's like all right sometimes you just run out of ideas mm-hmm. and having someone oh well what about this I mean so the the next beer we're gonna do was kind of like that well, we were tossing names at, of beers out there and I was like all right well how do I make this I love this name for a beer now how do I (laughs) what can I do to make this appropriate for the name yeah Yeah. so so one thing that I got to design with Anne that's come back like every year and thank you for that it means so much (laughs) to me that every December my beer comes back um when beer yoga we no one ever saw beer yoga lasting at first like longer than six months it's like oh this will be a trendy thing and then maybe we'll do it once a month and it's been every Saturday for like four years. Um, yeah. I plan vacations around it. Like <laughs> it is a thing. I mean, I can I could go if I want, but I'm that happy teaching this class that I like try and I try and be there as much as I can. That's awesome. But when it when it hit the one year anniversary, I was like, you think we can do a beer like a beer yoga? Because I think what is uh, what brewery is that? That's up north. Uh, Namaste Wit. Do you know a uh, Dogfish Head? Oh, they have okay. a Namaste yeah. Wit. It's like it's super cool and it's mm-hmm. a Belgian beer, of course. Like, but. Uh, we designed the rosemary wheat, wheat imperial wheat beer together. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. It's really we, good. We just yeah. I wish that's, that's one of our uh, twelve beers of Christmas. So yeah. this this Saturday it'll come yeah. back out again. And yeah. I do have an extra keg, so when we do yeah. the anniversary, we'll save that <laughs> and re-release yeah. it again. <laughs> it's cool because the rosemary came from my garden, which I'm not a huge gardener, but I've got like rosemary and stuff. Yeah, like you've, that got, and honey. you've got some really insane rosemary bushes. It's there. very yeah. they're awesome. I got some insane rosemary, but huge. They came with the house, which we love. Really? But yeah. That's so cool. So, all right, you started to say something that I've always wanted wanted to know. One, who comes up with the names? And two, what comes first, the name or the beer? Like, do you have a beer and then name it? Or is it like, like it sounded like you were like, oh, we had a name. How do we make this beer so taste it, like that name? It varies. Uh, some days, so I'll say most of the time we have a general concept for a beer that we want to do. And then it's the all right, let's go drink a couple beers and start spitballing ideas. 
Um, and it definitely helps if you've got a little bit of a buzz. It's <laughs> <laughs> a creativity juice. Although the conversation does devolve quite oh. quickly then. Yes, it does. Uh, and then we have, at that point, then we get someone involved to help design the label, which is also another collaborative uh Jeremy's a saint. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy made our, our, our guy yeah. that uh, helps facilitate the labels. He'll take all of our ideas and just they'll all be completely different. And he somehow turns it into a can. Turns label. it into a can label yeah. that looks amazing and uh, it's awesome. So most of the time it's beer first, then a, a name, and then a label. But there have been times where like this um, bowels of hoppy that we brought over today is I wanted, I knew we were going to do the 12 beers of Christmas. And it's like, all right, well, let's start throwing names and styles out there. What do we want to do? And I forgot who said it, what, who said it. I think maybe it was Haley uh, threw out Bowels of Hoppy as a name. I was like, okay, well, what? I, lo- I love that name. How do I make that work? How do I make that a beer? Um, it was kind of like, okay, well, let's, get some spruce tips and all right well what what kind of beer would be good to facilitate spruce right that's such a intense flavor and aroma well okay ipas there's some kind of piney hops out there that would play well uh what about a red ipa because the the sweet caramel notes from the red ipa will help balance out some of that spruce so that's we ended up with that, uh, a, a spruce tip red IPA. I think it's so badass. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm excited to see what hops, too, because I think I have an idea of what hops you put in it. I want to see if I'm right. Oh, I was messing with Marcus on oh, this yeah. one. I was like, ooh, you can, I'm thinking Pacific Northwest. So you're talking piney, but. You've gotten to the point where you're like, you could taste a beer, and you're saying, all right, they used Idaho 7 or Citra or something yeah, like that. Yeah, sometimes for sure. That is. That's yeah, cool. sometimes. There's there's a that's lot badass. of newer varieties. Um, yeah, it's super diverse. Are, very similar so some sometimes it, it is challenging especially if there's you know, five or six hop varieties in a mm-hmm. beer it's hard to pick out the exact ones but um there's classic hops um that it's yeah no i've i've had enough beers with that hop that i know that hop now yeah um which is it, it's fun <laughs> it is really cool especially <clears throat> she mentioned that the conversations devolve really quickly but like we go to world of beer a lot i mean I, I wouldn't say that all those conversations happen at World of Beer, but, like, tasting beer with them, with everybody, like, the whole group at a table is, like, amazing. It's such a wealth of knowledge. It's really yeah. cool. I mean, like I said, it is a definitely a devolved conversation after a few. But every now and then someone will be like, ooh, Simcoe. And it's like, oh, I got that, too. And it's like this, mm-hmm. yeah, it, go, it goes back and forth. For sure. Yeah, and then it's the, oh, well, I really like this. Ooh, but what if we did this? Oh, what if we <laughs> added this to that? And yeah. It's fun. It's I mean, fun. that's kind of yeah. how, uh, like, the Swamp Dog came about. It was like, oh, we really like this, and we really like this. Well, what if we combine them? Yeah. And one thing I have to say that I really appreciate about it is that it doesn't matter how long you've been with the company, where you're at, whether you're just a bartender or just because, like, the bartenders do, like, a lot. And I a lot of my day-to-day is bartending. Um, but they, they run through the trenches to create a really good environment for us. But... Um, whether you've been there, like our newest hire, Haley, she's one of our newest girls, and she merged super great into the family. But, like, Haley could come up with an idea, and I could come up with an idea, and if Haley's idea is better, we're going with Haley's, and that's perfect. We're not trying. There's no, like... But it's also, we might still come back around to yours to anyway. Yours, yeah, well. exactly. So. so it is... That's one thing that I super appreciate about, like, the research like the research and development side of things is, like, at the end of the day, we love where we work, and we're just mm-hmm. trying to secure that place. So it's it's been cool to watch how, like, open... Especially when I came on, everybody was so open to the ideas that I had. And if it sucked, they, they told me. But if it was good, we went with it. You <laughs> yeah. know, and it's it just gives a lot of, like, empowerment to hopefully create positive change. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. How many yeah. beers do you think you come up with, I guess, a month? Like, is it a monthly thing? Like, because obviously there's the brewery, there's the brewing process. But, like, for an idea with a beer, like, how are you? Well, so, like, this past like month and a half isn't necessarily <laughs> fair <laughs> thanks Dave <laughs> yeah th- thanks to our CEO who want, who's been screaming for us to have well not scream he's, he's been asking for us to do this 12 beers of Christmas uh since we opened 
and this is the first year we're doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was the, okay, uh, we just got done with Oktoberfest, and normally I try and have, like, four or five small batches released for Oktoberfest, and it was, okay, now uh, now it's Christmas time. Uh, oh, and you want 12? Yeah. Uh, and beers take anywhere from two weeks to be ready to a few months. So I, when we have special events, I try and tell them, it's like, I need, I need at least six months notice if you want something. So this was not six months notice. Uh, this was like two months notice. Uh, so this, I came out with started recipe and brewed. It maybe hasn't come out yet, but, Mm -hmm. uh, 15 or 16 different beers. Um, and that's that's the small batch side. I still do the, the regular, the like the flagship yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, we still brew those. So uh, I work a lot of weekends. <laughs> she's been working a lot lately, but she does it with a smile on her face. Yeah. So that's what I was going to say. So, like, you'll do obviously more than 12, and you're just hoping, like, do you do that in case one of them is just a definite no-go? Or do you release those anyways? Uh, so... I didn't necessarily do more than 12 for 12 beers at Christmas. It was also to make sure I don't run out of beer. So Mm -hmm. if we've had small batch releases where we ran out of two kegs of that that night. And so what we were trying to do for 12 beers at Christmas was release one beer a day for 12 days. And then on the last day, re-release everything at once to make it kind of a big party. Yeah. Um, that was a good surprise. Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. The pride beer. Well, that was one of them. Yeah. Dude, that was like, that's not a record. Wi- stout they, women too. pride people came out and drank all of that beer in like and a night. It was awesome. Yeah. So yeah. We, we ran out of that in four hours. Uh, stout women. Yeah. So and International stout, Women's Day and Pride. Uh, those yeah. were the two that and broke records as far as fastest consumption. Right. People <laughs> were all about it. Also, there were really, both of them, Blackbeard, I think was the... Uh, Bluebeard. Bluebeard, wow. Uh, really so it, was, it was a blueberry wheat for pride. Wheat, and yeah. then uh, Stout Lemon was a... Uh, orange. It was an orange ginger stout. tropical stout. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That was a good beer. Uh, but so... Uh, I never would have thought I would have heard tropical and stout put together. So actually, so the tropical stouts are a, a, a thing. Uh, so this, yeah. um, it became very popular in like Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can follow s- the progression of stouts through the British colonies and that, uh, and IPAs as well. So, like, so specifically in Jamaica, they kind of altered a traditional stout recipe to utilize ingredients that were readily available for them. Right. So you find a lot of like molasses used um and i don't use molasses in that particular beer yet i keep toying with the idea of adding it for that kind of flavor but uh i use orange peel and ginger in it because you see that in some of the cooking yeah um and it's it's not an intense amount of orange or an intense amount of ginger it's just enough that hey there's something else this isn't a normal stout. <laughs> I think the ginger made it refreshing, as refreshing as a stout can be. Like I, we we released that I typically in the summer, that. and most people would think a stout in the summer. It can be. It can be really good in the summer. Yeah, y'all are blowing my mind with this tropical <laughs> stout. You, you use two words that I've never would have ex- expressed with a stout: refreshing and uh, tropical. But I, that's so cool, though. Like it's cool that you have that much flexibility with beer. You know what I'm saying? It's incredibly diverse. I mean, you can speak way more on that than I can. I, you can. Uh, so I, I just, uh, last week I brewed a juniper saison. So my, my uncle has I'm a so bunch of. so excited about that. We have a bunch of juniper at my uncle's property. And so he sent me down this massive bag of juniper and I used like a handful of yeah. juniper seeds. It's like, this, that was way more than I needed, but. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, it's a thought that counts. <laughs> uh, I'll, I have more ingredients for later if I if it goes over well and we can try it again. I don't um, want to like spoil, but isn't like a saison one of your favorite styles to brew? Again, it kind of depends on the type of year. So yeah. like, I, I don't know, have, hard, but I can't pin down a favorite beer style ever because it's time of year, what mood I'm in. Yeah, but every um, now and then like she'll come out and be day. like. Saison. Like, oh man. Okay, <laughs> this is gonna be good. I, I was really it? Rec- it was the saison. Well, recently it was a saison, right? It was the 
What was the, it was it for the anniversary last year? There was just a, you brewed a Saison that just like, poof, oh yeah, the, uh, everybody's mind. the Three Musketeers. Three Saison. Musketeers. That thing, people still are like, when is that coming back? That was my, yeah, I think so that's my we, favorite uh, beer you've ever brewed, honestly. Obviously, it, it's a Bel- it's actually not even a Belgian Saison, it's a French Saison because I use a French Saison yeast and all of the hops in it are French hops, hence Three Musketeers for the oh, name. Yeah. But uh, it was, Fantastic. I, I think it is I, my favorite beer you've ever brewed. I'm pretty proud of that one. I yeah. hope we get to scale that one up soon. Oh, I uh, hope that. If that I'm, that might be the beer. Swamp Thing After Dark, though, is doing really well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, is After Dark a brewery? No, oh, so, no, it's one of our beers. Uh, so we have our normal Swamp Thing, which mm-hmm. is a fruited oh, sour. I, yeah, yeah. So Swamp Thing After Dark is like way scaling up the fruit and using some different fruits. So um, Swamp Normal Swamp Thing is pink guava and blackberries. Mm-hmm. After Dark is blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, and <laughs> cherries. And vanilla. And vanilla <laughs> in there, too. It is so, so it's, good. It's I think a, I saw a smoothie. A smoothie sour. It's a smoothie, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I have the page pulled up, so I'm looking at the beers right now. <laughs> if All right, you yeah. like IPAs, it's probably not going to be like as much on your radar, but it's fantastic. But if, if you love like fruit anything and if you like sours uh this is this is gonna be right up your alley um smoothie sours are kind of kind of relatively new to the augusta area yeah. but they've they've been in the midwest for years i remember i went three years ago to fargo uh to visit a friend and that's all i could find it was With sours smoothie sours. smoothie sours. oh smoothie sours uh, where like you you pour it and it it's thick it is a smoothie like in the glass viscous and yeah do you think that the climate has a lot to do with it because it's hard to it's it's the big thing about smoothie sours is they if you're not careful don't keep well they're harder to they're volatile essentially because there's so much fruit Mm -hmm. so they pressurize and then they come out and sometimes you'll pour them and they're not it's basically just head maybe i I I don't know but like i expect because it's colder is why i was thinking so it'd be less volatile well because this was also when i went was february and fargo north Coda, it is cold. cold. I was expecting nice, thick, like stouts and all the barrel aged, high gravity stuff. And I was like, I can't find a single one. Well, that's what I'm saying. All the, the, they were all the the smoothie sours, which was a new Mm -hmm. concept to me. Yeah. Our friend Rachel Frisell brought us a bunch. She's from mm-hmm. North she's Dakota. From Don't North kill me if I'm wrong. If it's not South. Yeah, okay. she, she's yeah. from <laughs> Fargo as well. Yeah, she owns Garden Gathered Flowers. Uh, she's an amazing florist in town. Highly recommend her as a podcast guest. And she's a really good friend of the breweries. But she's cool. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, do you want to start? Uh, let's get into the, the Crowler. Yeah, this one sure. I'm really excited to try. So this Say is, IPA. This is the beer that we, we were kind of talking about. This is uh, Bows of Hoppy. This is the Spruce Tip Red IPA. We could do a little bit bigger pour of that because that's a 32 yeah, ounce crowler. That's a, the crowler. So, um, this is actually only six percent, so not a yeah. That's not too high heavy. Grav. I I kind of <laughs> fell into IPAs in an interesting way. Um, my wife and I's second or third date was at Savannah River Brewing Company. Nice. I love those stories. And uh, I was like a just a traditional Bud Light drinker. I I hadn't really been to breweries or anything this is actually like my first time at a brewery i ordered an ipa on accident <laughs> and i wasn't a huge fan at first i'm not gonna lie uh but i kind of ipas are an acquired taste <laughs> and well i choked it down because i was like this is what the masculine thing is to do <laughs> is to you know act like i enjoy this um but no, I really enjoyed the the environment of a brewery, and I was like, oh, this is a really cool, like, atmosphere, something I, I'd love to be around. And uh, I kind of had, like, the Stockholm Syndrome, you know, where you fall in love with your captor. Mm-hmm. And now IPAs are my go-to. When I go to a brewery, that's always the first beer I'm looking for is an IPA or something of that nature. Yeah. And it just so happens, like, most of my favorite beers are IPAs now. My favorite one is in a brewery in Charlotte, Wooden Robot. I don't know if you're yep. familiar. Yep. They have a What He's Having. Okay. And it's like incredible. When you first taste it, it's so smooth. You're like, this is juice. And then you get the beer aftertaste and the IPA so aftertaste. The, uh, like the New England style, the yeah. easy juicy. Oh my gosh, it's so good. So we've, so. we've got our version of that, our, our volume three of it. Uh, we actually brewed on Friday last week. Uh, so that'll be coming out right after Christmas, essentially. Is a volume, do you change ingredients on a volume or like 
proportions of one like or is it just another release of it so for blonky kong um we basically we might adjust the hops Mm -hmm. or i'm sorry we might adjust the malt slightly the big difference between the different volumes uh for blonky kong is the hops um so i think we used we only used one hop variety that we used in the previous volume the other two are, are are new um so we just wanted to change the flavor up a little bit um this is going to be a little bit juicier than volume two was, mm-hmm. uh, but it, that's that's all from the hops. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get into this. I, I smelt it while you're talking. Oh, uh, yeah. This is going to be good. It's so hop. Like, it's all the initially, the only thing I'm thinking about is hops when yeah. I smell it. Like, yeah. it's kind of got that dank, like, weedy mm-hmm. type smell. Little little resinous, a uh, little pine. Uh, maybe not just a little pine. Maybe a lot of pine. I think it's a lot of pine. <laughs> Yeah, so this is this is very dark. This and it's is, dark, yeah. Uh, this is a very dark red, um, borderline getting into like a brown IPA, um, and it is it's better. Um, but there's these sweet caramel notes to kind of offset, offset it. it, yeah. And then tasting it like on the back end is like a freshly cut Christmas tree almost. Like if when my dad and I used to go pick out a Christmas tree every year, like he he made me go eat a pine needle off. Uh, it's like, all right, well, this this is the one because this one tasted better than the others. Um, but that, I don't, to me, that, that beer, this beer uh, brings back those memories. Yeah. Of just that, that smell and that taste. Absolutely. Uh, and, and the best possible way, my, not everyone would think, oh, yeah, let me bite a, a piece of pine needle and it's going to taste good. But You know, it came to my beer. mind when I tasted it the scene that came to my mind was like being under a Christmas tree with their saw, yep. cutting it down, ready to go. Like, it's just like that. <laughs> I don't know, whatever that scent is or that scene, like that's what you encapsulated here. Like I've got Clark Griswold kind of. <laughs> yeah. Clark Griswold vibes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not a big IPA drinker, but this one is a lot, as, as says the girl who works in craft beer. But that's one thing I just like, I've, I'm getting better at. But if yeah. it's, there's one thing to like taste it, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, technically. And to be okay with it. It's like, I like it, but if it's just me and I'm off the clock, I'm going to order something, something else. else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So but this is really good. I actually might drink this tomorrow when I'm at work. Well, this is yeah. the release for tomorrow. Perfect. So. Yeah, I will already, I will like, won't even have to taste it when I get there. I can just be like, you need to drink this. Do you know what, when I think about, or when like people make fun of the craft beer industry, why do they always target IPA drinkers? Can you guys what, answer that? I don't that? know what the deal with that is. So have you noticed should, it, or it, is that well, just me? That oh, yeah, there's certain large companies that have have definitely done ads. It's that, definitely yeah, uh, yeah, have poked fun at IPA drinkers. So I think some of it is like old school home brewing and craft beer was. If it was an IPA, it was bitter. Yeah, it was how how scrunched up can I get your face to look <laughs> like, uh, and are you still going to drink it after? Yeah, right. Are you a man are you gonna, or not? <laughs> are you going to order another one after that? Yeah. Um, which I honestly, I kind of miss those IPAs too. Cause we've gone kind of the opposite direction now and it's the IPAs are very sweet and yeah. juicy now. And I like uh, some IPAs now taste like, all right, are there hops or did you just add orange juice to this? (laughs) Yeah. uh, Yeah. They're very fruit forward. Yeah. That's, that's been the latest trend with IPAs. Uh, I guess my, my favorite style of IPA would actually be a black IPA, um, which gives you some of the flavors of like a stout or a porter, Mm -hmm. but very, still very bitter and very hop forward, which is just, it's fun. It's different. And you almost never see it anymore. Uh, it had a very quick, like three year fad and then people moved on. Uh, right. but once in a while you start seeing some come through. I, we do one at the brewery, uh, hops of darkness, oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's aggressive. Yeah. Which is, is fine if you like that. But I, I guess to get back to your, your question, I, I guess those certain big companies poking fun is more like, are you, are you actually drinking a beer? Oh, uh, right. Like. Is it opposed to water? <laughs> well, I, there's more like, well, is, is that a beer or is that just like hop water or like what? Yeah. Yeah. 
Are, are you assaulting your senses? Do you actually know what you're doing? Uh, that's where I'm at with it. When people are like, give me an IPA. I'm like, okay, that's perfect. If that's what you know that you like, then great. If you like differentiate between hops, totally fine. But I feel like people just get caught up on just IPAs. And I feel like there's a massive world of beer out there. Like you, I mean, like even the Doppelbox, you get into like all the box side of things. Mm-hmm. Really interesting, fantastic stuff. But you also like the maltier stuff. There's just like, I, I ju- I don't, I'm not saying I judge people, but like I am frustrated when people get stuck in their boxes when it comes to their craft beer drink. They're like, this is the style. Like even though wheat beers or Belgians are my favorite, I'm still. I had a lager today. I was in Greenville earlier well, from you, Thomas you, Creek. You're drinking Amazing. a spruce tip red. Yeah, IPA. and I like it. You know, it's, it's the uh, thing is just be open minded about. Like, yeah, don't. I mean, it's, it's the guys that who don't want to drink are sour. Like it's. And you can tell I'm, when they I'm taste so, it, they I'm like sorry it better. It's kind than, of pink. Well, it's the thing. It's like you can tell. It's still really yeah. good, and yeah. you still might really. Do you like blackberries? Well, then try the beer. Yeah. yeah. Like, do you like like sweet tart candies? Okay. Well, it's, it kind of tastes like a sweet tart. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. So try it. It doesn't hurt to try it. Exactly. <laughs> um, when you know I'm bartending, I people come up all the time, and I'll be like, "What?" what can I get you? And they're like, we don't, I don't really know. And then I'll say, well, what kind of styles do you like? And they like shy away from it. They don't want to answer my question. And I'm like, so you drink Bud Light or Miller Light? And they're like, yeah. Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's fine. And I'm like, you're okay. Like, it's fine. No one's here to judge you about the fact that you drink American lagers. Like, right, right, we are absolutely. not, we are happy that you're here. How, how about like, let me educate you. You're supporting on, local. I was right. like, we love that. <laughs> and typically that person doesn't know what they like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit them with a uh, lager. I'm going to hit them with the Pilsner. I'm going to hit them with an IPA, depending on what's going on, whether they like fruity. I'll ask mm-hmm. you, like, fruity or bitter better. So I'll hit a New England versus a West Coast style, as close as I can get to those with whatever's on top. Yeah. And then sometimes I'll throw a sour at them, and it's pink, and they're like, these, like, big blue-collar boys are like, mm, and then they drink <laughs> it, and they're like, oh, my God, this is so good. We have, like, a car, a group of car guys, the import guys, their favorite beer is Swamp Thing After Dark, and none of them. And it is hot pink, and these guys sing its praises. They buy it by the case. They're obsessed with it. They don't care. Like, And it's great that they're, like, I, I love those guys. I think it's fantastic that they're honest about what they really like versus trying to, like, play into this, like, massive yeah. IPA image. Yeah. When I was working F&B still, uh, I turned more Bud Light drinkers onto craft beer by, instead of trying to give them – another Pilsner or another light lager, a craft lager, yeah. I gave um, uh, my go-to is Shinerbach. A Shinerbach's great beer, a great because starter it's, beer. It's not, it's not super aggressive. So any kind of like an amber or a red, it's different enough beer flavor, you know, flavor-wise from you know, Bud Light, Miller Light, anything like that. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, this, this is branching me out into craft without being – aggressively hoppy or aggressively uh sour or a bunch of fruit thrown at me or anything like that and it's it's a nice way to oh beer doesn't have to taste like a light lager right there's there's so many other things out there and it's all right well yeah what else what else do you got for me let me yeah what else can beer taste like you're building trust with your consumer and then all of a sudden they're like and same with i i don't want to put people in boxes but same traditionally in my experience with um people who women um who are scared because it's this big masculine so these women come in and they're on dates and you can tell they're like I don't know what to do or like and Mm -hmm. again not trying to like generalize or anything like that but but traditionally you can see and it's like they think craft beer is IPAs they think it's nothing but hoppy beers so I put the swamp thing in front of them they're like this is beer like Uh do you have a seltzer or do you have a cider or something like that and I'm like no but Sometimes we have a seltzer on. We, yeah, we, we, we do a couple hard thing. seltzers once in a while. But generally what I do is I turn them on to one of our mixes. We use we mix Swamp Thing half and half and Wolf Dog. And it's called Swamp Dog. And one day I feel like it's going to have to get brewed because people love it. We might yeah. have to, like, eventually bring it as its own beer. But it's cooler that it's kind of like a – it's not it's, a secret a, menu item. It's a but tap room only thing. Yeah, or you <laughs> can buy, a like, a six-pack of both and mix it at home. But watching these people, uh, like I said, not just women, but generally being like, 
oh my gosh, like I like beer. It's such a relief because then all of a sudden, you know, there's this girl who got drugged to a brewery or guy even like who only drinks wine or whatever and they get drugged to a brewery and you could tell they're like, oh, I don't know, I'm not. Like yeah. company Christmas And then all of a sudden they just like are... relax. Yeah. They're like, oh, I have this thing. And then they come back up to you and you're like, can I have that thing you gave me? And it's like, yeah, girl, I got you. Like, you know, <laughs> it's cool. to it's, It brings a lot of joy to like, I love to convert. Craft beer people are pretty cool generally. And if you can convert them, they like. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to think of that first experience that you gave them, and then they're going to hopefully expect that and, and give mm-hmm. that everywhere else that they go. But Yeah. What do you think has caused the boom in breweries and microbreweries? Because, I mean, I, maybe it's just because I'm, like, starting – I've been a craft beer brewery goer for the last four years. But I feel like in that four years, I've also seen the industry grow. People love it. I mean, New York, they just finished, like, their beer trail – Beer and Wine Trail, so, like, you can stop on all these breweries traveling through upstate New York. Um, But what do you think has caused, or have you seen, an expansion in microbreweries and breweries? That absolutely is is a thing. Craft breweries are growing, Um, so it's kind of twofold. It's it's home brewers, it's people doing this at home and experimenting, and, okay, hey, like, my, my neighbors, my friends say this is really good, I'm retired now, or maybe huh. I don't like the job I'm doing. Everyone's kind of on board with me doing this. Let me let me see if I can Start make it. a profession out of this. Um, and just experimenting. Um, and that's people have been very supportive mm-hmm. and facilitating to make that happen. So that's that's one side. The other side of that is is we're still getting over prohibition laws. Not even craft beer, but beer in general when prohibition hit. We didn't have anything. Um, right. Your big companies like Budweiser survived by producing a malt syrup, essentially. And, hey, whatever you do, don't boil this with water and add hops to it at home. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Right, right. You know, they were able to survive, but we're finally, you know, on the state level getting past some of these laws. Uh, so... Three years ago, four years, I guess four years ago now, um, Georgia finally changed their laws where it used to be for a brewery, you could go to the brewery, you could take a tour, and with that tour, you could get six, six six-ounce samples. But that's all you could do. It was an educational tasting that you got as part of your tour. Yeah. Um, So four years ago now, I guess, um, you can finally actually go to a brewery and have a pint normal bar (laughs) yeah Uh, it's interesting that you bring that up because i'm pretty sure columbia county still suffers from that like i having lived here now i'm like i can't believe that there hasn't been a brewery in columbia county i mean i love savannah river brewing company but for some people especially out in lincolnton well now they have backpedal brewing but uh maybe out in appling per se that's a it's a long drive it's like an hour drive or so and you know, I think, like, I was like, man, a brewery would crush in Columbia County. But then come to find out they still have this law where you have to have, like, 51% of your sales come from food or something other than alcohol, right? For right. Sure. So yeah. even even a brew pub trying to open in Columbia yeah. County, then that's that's really hard because still most of your sales are going to be from your beer. You might be, like, 49% uh, of your food sales. But yeah. and it's, it's really hard. Yeah, Columbia County, there's... I think I know of one actual bar in Columbia County that got grandfathered in. Uh, oh, I was, didn't know about it. Um, the hideout? No. Um, I didn't I know hideout was Columbia, because there's one in... I don't know if it is Columbia County. Oh, that's no, it's what on I mean. Washington no, that's, Road. That's behind Starbucks on Washington Road. Yeah. Yeah, but... I'm, I'm backyard Tavern. It's yeah, where the home, home, homebrew shop is. Oh, <laughs> oh, the tavern. It's literally called the tavern. Yeah, so it's you, like it a quarter road. mile up the road. Oh, nice. I've yeah. always wanted to go in there, because I feel like it's just like the... Hole in the wall, typical. But that's bar. the only actual bar that I know of in Columbia County. Interesting. That they got just grandfathered in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I can't believe that. Like Columbia County is trying to grow and be this next big thing. I mean, Evans they had the whole city, like best city to live in, or whatever. We'd right. love to be in Columbia County, and that's we what I'm thinking. Have, like, like a secondary location. That's what is happening? I mean, also, come on. On the other end, we want other breweries to open. Um, oh, Brian absolutely. says how many there's. We there's, have room for like there's room for like other, seven more breweries seven more breweries before the before, before the easily. market's too saturated. So seven more breweries could move to Augusta, Georgia, whether it's Columbia County or Richmond County, and we w- it would just 
make the craft beer culture explode. Yeah. I mean, that's a good Robert. I mean, maybe we should touch on what he's doing. Yeah. So our um, our newest back of house hire, um, Robert. He's he's in the process of app opening up a brewery. He's a longtime home local home brewer. Mm-hmm. Um, he came in to just kind of I don't job shadow essentially for a day, and we were. Adam and I, uh, our head brewer and I, were just were swamped uh, on the brew house side. And it's like, well, do you want, like, a job instead of just job shadow? You want to, like, do you want to work for us for a little bit while you get everything set up for your brewery? And right. now you have some professional experience to go with the home brewing experience. And you can kind of see what we do. And, you know, by all means, you know, go to Back Paddle, go to Riverwatch, go see what they do, too. Do you want a job in the meantime? <laughs> uh, yeah. Is is that a brewery opening up on Broad Street? Uh, he does not have a uh, definite location that I know of right this All second. Right. Um, I could have swore I saw. He's a trying something. Trying I think to go he on had Broad like Street. an area in town right. that he was thinking of, and then the pandemic hit, and there were just like right. oh, we have to let Robert speak on that. But like generally, like we're like yeah, we totally will have we will take you as long as we can have you, and when you are ready to open, we will come support your business. We yeah. love him and absolutely have have Robert come on. Yeah, you should yeah. definitely interview him as far as like up and and maybe you guys can have well, a conversation about Columbia County it. too. Yeah, <laughs> it's well, yeah. you know, what's funny is like I wanted to open up a brewery. I think it's a really cool thing, and I think it was, it's something that would do well here. Yeah. Again, I also love the community and culture behind it. But I see so many buildings, and I'm like, man, that would be a sick brewery. But yeah. you're kind of strapped in Columbia County. Yeah, I, yeah. I have seen some in Richmond County there. I was like, that would be cool. But The um, problem with Richmond County uh, for opening up a brewery, like specifically like downtown, like on Broad Street, is mm-hmm. the plumbing. It is some ancient yeah. plumbing. And you go <laughs> there. The facilities are, and Draft really? Society's there. Um, yeah. Alex Niece, I think is the, her name. Forgive me if I haven't seen her in forever, so I hope it's okay that I told everybody that your name. But Alex Niece from Draft Society is amazing, and she owned opened one in Aiken. So, mm-hmm. And also, I feel like we need to mention Renee in Columbia County doing Stay. Stay Social, yeah. Yeah, so while there's not necessarily a brewery, there are people that are actively working to promote the craft beer culture, and that we're grateful for. Yeah, for sure. that's yeah. A, that's. I'm very grateful for Stay. It's interesting, yeah. though. I mean, I've never... So, yeah, I need to, it's because I'm, I live We're downtown good. and it's a Columbia County thing. It's a not drinking and driving thing. So yeah, yeah. Just, the cards haven't lined up that we have a DD and, and things like that. Because if I'm going, I'm, I mean, those serve yourself tap rooms. <laughs> I could get in trouble at one of those. So I know my limits. So I know, I know. So that's another thing I was going to ask is one thing that I've noticed is breweries like there's no, while you are kind of in competition in, with each other, you're really not like there's always so much collaboration happening. Like, Hey, we're gonna run a beer over here. That's a collab with Savannah River Brewing Company, and that might be a back paddle or something like that. And that to me is so cool. It's like you're really not concerning yourself with them. You're focusing on making your own beer better, but at the same time, like you're letting people know that hey, there's another brewery over there. Like check them out. Or to we, me, that's so cool. You we, brewed with Kyle. Yeah, I from brewed back with, paddle. Yeah. I brewed so with Kyle, and before we hired Robert, I brewed with Robert as Tap Thirty Three. Exactly. Um. Uh, we did we did that one Oktoberfest. Uh, it was not uh, so uh, the the Oktoberfest before the pandemic. Um, we did a collaboration with both Back Paddle and Tap Thirty Three. We invited Riverwatch down. They just they had a scheduling conflict, so they weren't they weren't able to come. But craft brewery it, craft brewing is supposed to be a community. I mean, yeah. most, a lot of absolutely a lot of these people homebrewed together mm-hmm. or were in the same homebrew club. Like it's to me, it's interesting though. How is it? How does that not translate to other businesses? Like it seems to be a thing that's singular with craft beer. That is an interesting concept. I haven't thought about that. Yeah. I mean, like it's, it's crazy because when you think about it, like, so Anne and I worked together here, but we worked together at Aiken Brewing Company and didn't even know each other. She was a brewer. I so I, well, I we helped, knew of I helped, each other. Yeah, so my dad was a brewer there, and I I'd come in and just help yeah, out once in a like, while. I I'd because. seen her face and was like, mm-hmm. "Who's this badass girl brewing <laughs> with these dudes?" And just like whatever, and then she popped up at the brewery, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And now like her father is your dad is still involved with brewing. Yeah, so my, at my the brewery. dad's again, I, like I said, he he started brewing when I was four, right. so. Uh, He's longtime home brewer, but now 
his contract for I'm his boss? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she became her dad's boss. And yeah, hey, Dad, <laughs> you need to come in, all right? Yeah. No, yeah. I come in on Sundays and I see his truck, and he's like, he's brewing Ann's beer. Yeah. I'll, it's like, hey, yeah. yeah. I need you to follow this recipe. No, Dad, we, you get to do your recipe next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's super cool to, like, see it and stuff like that. Uh, side note, he loves Weimar on our puppies, my husband. Like, we, his, her dad has two pups out of this we just got a pup and they're they're all we're the, kind of the family three pups now are yeah. from the same litter yeah so <laughs> and and is the aunt to my puppy yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes it's weird but yeah it, yeah it's cool how the community just kind of spreads yeah and how it extends outside of craft beer too it does. Yeah. like yeah. you make relationships at the brewery but they extend outside of the brewery For which sure. is really like cool we, we're all a bunch of nerds and so like uh Myself, our sales manager, and our GM, we, we go to Renaissance festivals together. We, yeah. go, we go see movies. We'll, we'll do movie, like, just different groups of people. All right, you have off. Let's go see this movie together. Yeah. Um, I call it, and, and it's, like, something that I was, like, accidentally kind of coined for the brewery is uh, we're basically a community center that serves beer. Yeah. And, like, like it's not, that. again, to make the beer an afterthought because the beer is the, is the star. Like, people right. are not going to come if the beer tastes like crap. Um, but yeah, generally like being, that's one thing that differs between where Ann and I kind of come apart is, um, I work front of the house and she works back of the house. So I'm there when everybody else is there. And it is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life to watch people that, especially in the military, a lot of people move here and you can almost point them out. They're like alone at the bar. They <laughs> just moved here. They have no idea. Yeah. They think like they live in Columbia County, which is totally fine. Richmond County is great too though. So where i I, love I used to live in Richmond County. So. Richmond County is fantastic. Um, but so they're like, you can tell it's almost easy to spot. You kind of introduce these people to people and you see them make friends. And all of a sudden they're not sitting alone at the bar anymore. They're over at a table. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're like, how did you become friends with this person? Or uh, yeah, it's, it's been insanely. I needed the community very badly when I found it and watching other people get to benefit from that. It's really rewarding. So. Yeah. I know the craft beer industry just, it, that was so rewarding for me as well. And, and the community I found, cause I, I was not in a good place and yeah. then came onto SRBC and it just it, like, I, I found my friend family. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just kind of all fell in place and it was awesome. It yeah. Was, it sounds kind of cliche to like, be like, Oh, we're like family, but like we are legitimately <laughs> like it is. I wouldn't say, I mean, like we, we are very close. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's unhealthy, but like we friends, family, Coworkers, like it is. Yeah. At sometimes there are multiple different facets of a relationship happening at the same time, and somehow we managed to still run a business despite that. <laughs> yes. I don't know how, but yeah. Well, yeah. that that's awesome. I mean, I think that's what every people or most people dream of is finding a, a job where it's you love going in on Monday. Yeah. And it sounds like y'all find that, which is I'm jealous, frankly, and I, <laughs> that's kind of why I started the podcast in the first place. Is I was. I just, I love talking to people. So this is my way of doing what I love. And for you guys to find work doing that is so cool. So I really commend y'all on that. that. That's awesome. Thanks. We definitely feel, I feel, I can't speak for you. Yeah. I feel like extremely lucky about it. Oh, absolutely. I don't take it lightly. Do you yeah. like bartending, by the way? Um, So I'm going to tell my age. I'm 30, so I'm getting a little too old for bartending. <laughs> but if I'm going to bartend anywhere, it's at Savannah River. Uh, I have a really good relationships with the community there. So. Yeah. So funny, funny story. Uh, you know those like Myers Briggs personality yeah. tests, and they match you with a career. Yeah. <laughs> Almost every time I take one, you want to know what's in my top five? Bartender. Yeah. And I'm like, what? That's like people are getting like executives, all these other things, and I get bartender. And I'm like, at first I was like, that's kind of dumb, but now I think about it, and I'm like, man, I think I would actually really love it because you get to engage with people constantly, hear people's stories. You don't know like if you're a light to that person in the day, you don't know what you just imparted on them. And exactly. And it's so cool to think about it like that. You can completely change a day, a person's day. Yeah. You can change the course of their lives depending on what's going on. Right. Like you yeah. never know. Like, yeah. And so that's where I'm at with it. It's like I, I joke that I'm getting a little too old for bartending, but the reason I keep doing it is the community at Sunday right. River. It is insane. Like I, if I, did, I could tell you a thousand stories about each individual regular that came in and, and where they were at and where they are now. Like, you don't, people don't typically traditionally think of the bar as a place to go become a better person, but I've watched some of my regulars grow into some of the most fantastic human yeah. beings. Um, just getting out of their shell, they're kind of lonely and quiet when they first started coming in. And like I said, now all of a sudden they're across the tap room at a table of like 12 different people playing Cards Against Humanity. And I found out recently that there was this like, our, some of the brewers, uh, 
and uh, Adam, sorry, excuse me, Adam has kind of started this impromptu disc golf group with some of our regulars. So now yeah. some of our regulars are going in and they're throwing discs with <laughs> our brewers or with one of our brewers and his fiance. Mm-hmm. Um, and that all started from, and I have to give you guys the credit, you know, you go into a brewery at three o'clock, the staff is usually there. The front back of the house staff is usually there having beers, right? Mm-hmm. So they're sitting there and they're at this table and usually they're kind of closed off to whatever. They've always been extremely nice to people. And if people want to come by and say, hey, talk to them or whatever, they're at the end. Some of the times these guys come in at like 4 a.m. and it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and they're just getting off having a beer. They always, y'all always make space to be nice to and just to like share a moment with our regulars and, and even new people too. We just recently had a guy from the UK visit that was amazing. Yeah, he's yeah. And I'm so glad you, you pulled him over that night. Yeah, that uh, was like... I, I was definitely there later than I probably yeah. should have been that night. But it, I, I got to talk to this, this guy from the UK who's part of... Um, so it's camera, but uh, camera. trying to yeah. trying to explain that. Uh, so they're very particular about their beer styles. Mm-hmm. And he came in and was trying our beers and... You brought, Taylor brought him over to me to just say hi. Cause, you know, I, I'm hi. familiar with camera and, and it's a very old distinguished craft. Very, culture very English in the UK. Thing. Very yes. English. Like they, you do it one way and that's the way. And, and he came over and it was like, I absolutely love everything you're doing. Yeah. All of these beers are like very true to style and awesome. I haven't had anything I haven't liked yet. That's the, that just made my day. And I yeah. just, I was like, I need that little ego boost yeah. today. That's but great. Them remaining open to people, because it is a romantic industry. Everyone wants to know, like, how do I become a brewer? How do I do this? How do I work yeah. for, do this for a living? Um, and you're all, y'all's openness to, and being willing to, like, not be at the cool kids table. Like, opening the cool kids table to, like, the average Joe is getting off work and, I mean, I could think of a million different names. Russell Tom. Like, I could shout them all out right now. Like, just people that now we hang out with outside of brewery right it, I mean, it we, bleeds away from the like, we know. just had our our company christmas party uh and like we planned it out so that way most everybody could go and go hang out with some regulars not on the clock somewhere else which was awesome like that was super cool and russell came through and i don't know if yeah he's the best <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, we were like recently at our Christmas party and one of our regulars like wanted to close down the brewery so he could hang out. He was like, I won't yeah. rent the place out so I can buy y'all drinks. Like he is that invested yeah. in our family. He, and he like, wanted to just this is a dude hang who, out outside of work and like let the staff feel like they weren't having to work. So we, right. we ended up doing it. So we'd scheduled our company Christmas party the same night. So we'd yeah. be closed anyway. And then we all went to Stillwater, (laughs) which Stillwater is a company favorite. Stillwater is like if you're going to a bar, uh, Second City when the tap when the when the yeah I don't know what's happening now that Dirty Girl bought them out. I haven't been. I haven't been there. It's 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 going through some changes right now. Um, Dirty Girl, but yeah, yeah, with Dirty Girl and uh, yeah, Yeah, well, Rectech they got so big and look at them now. Yeah, I had uh, Chef John on the show. Really nice guy, by the way. John is fantastic. Super cool. He came to the brewery one day and made like. He made shrimp and grits, and he made, like, lamb lollipops. And they were just so good. That sounds I so ate bad. grits, and his grits were amazing. I've had yeah. the pleasure of hanging out with him a couple of times. And let me tell you, like, even when the cameras are off, that dude is an amazing human oh, being. So like, he cool. is never anything different. Like, what you see on his, like, cooking with Chef John or the late-night munchies, that Thursday yeah, yeah. night thing that they do, that thing, that segment is so great. But he is in my experience, that human all the time. He's just a fantastic person. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Great guy. I, I had a, so my wife was like, you're crazy for doing this, but whatever. I cooked a steak for him. Like, oh, nice. that's why I'm saying like, I love to like do something. She's like, I don't know why, like you're going to get roasted. And I'm like, cool. If I get roasted, that's good. Cause we'll people something. will listen. And I learned something, <laughs> but I cooked a mistake and he, he liked it. So that was really cool. But yeah, awesome guy, by the way. Yeah. Awesome guy. So, yeah. Second City's, uh, yeah, we love Second. We love Second City. Um, mm-hmm. Shout out to Cara. Um, yeah, we miss Cara behind the bar. Yeah, she makes the best cocktails. Yeah, I was my significant other had his birthday and like we invited her over and she brings over like a bar pre-made cocktails already. <laughs> and She's ready to like, go. 
alcoholic pies. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. But still water's great. Uh, yeah. We're a big fan of Nacho Mamas too. I which you Wait, don't. Yeah. yeah. But Oh, I still love them. I just oh, don't do. get out much. So much company business happens there in a world of beer. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Well, we, it's like we all bounce around to different places like Craft mm-hmm. and Vine. Back in the house is world of beer is their big thing. But that's yeah. that's a, we that's need a Monday off. afternoon meeting. That's a we need to blow off some steam yeah. or we need beer ideas. If shit hits the fan <laughs> at the brewery, we're going to world of beer. Like if someone's sad. It's a bad day. Shots at World of Beer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever find yourself? So sometimes I'll like, I'll have a beer and I'll think about it months later and then it's gone and I'll never see it again. Yeah. So Monday Night Brewing had a beer. It was an orange creamsicle IPA. I saw I had that recently ish. Really? I feel like I did. It. Monday nights or Wild Leap? Because Wild Leap does. Oh, Wild no, Leap yeah. has one. I'm that's called that. Truck, Truck Chaser. Chaser. I, yeah. Okay, sorry. Ignore that's me. That's pretty good. We were just at Monday night for a conference, though. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I had a Orange Cream School IPA for Monday night. And I was like, holy crap, this is good. But I don't live in Atlanta. So I was like, oh, well, whatever. Next time I'm up there, I'll go get one. Nope. It's gone. Uh, I was like, dang, you dang. Should keep it. That's, that's the fun about doing like one-off beers is it. It's a way to, it's like, all right, let me throw this out there, see if it sticks. Do yeah. people like this? All right, well, now I'm going to make you wait for it. <laughs> right. <laughs> let me, well, I'll release it maybe next year. <laughs> yeah. On the topic of Monday night, that was, we just recently went to talk about collaboration between breweries. We just recently went to a symposium. Yeah, it was the Georgia, the Craft. Georgia Craft Brewers Guild, yeah. uh, their fall symposium. And that, that was, that was awesome. That was my first experience with like uh, a beer conference for professionals and I was just, like, so fired up when I left. I mean, I just could not. You talk about the collaboration. I was, like, I've been in craft beer for a long time, but, like, I left that thing, like, roaring and ready to go. I was, like, (laughs) man, craft beer's the shit. Like, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Like, yeah, I was was just so stoked at, like, how much information was shared from various Creature Comforts was there. There was, like, uh, one of the uh, research and development guys from Creature Comforts. Fantastic. I, uh, like, attended the... uh, a couple different workshops, but just could not say enough about Monday Night Brewing Company and how great that event was. Yeah, because we were on the the, garage. the West End area, yeah. so like there was mm-hmm. Monday Night, there was West Best uh, Wild Leap. Yeah, Wild Leap. Uh, was it Wild Best no. End? Alpha Wild Heaven. Wild Heaven. Wild Heaven. Wow, sorry, Wild Leap's fantastic. But that's Lagrange, Georgia. There, yeah. I'm going with the Truck Chaser stuff again. Yeah, um, that, I Chance IPA is my favorite. Yeah, there, there, there's three, four different breweries right there, and so like all the classes were spread about spread out amongst all of those and so you kind of got to and you had a few minutes between classes so it'd be like all right well let me go grab a beer yeah. or a snack here and let me go grab a beer and a snack here i'm in yeah. the wrong industry <laughs> yeah ann and i went with our general manager uh yeah. mike who's fantastic and it was really cool because we'd meet up between sessions and like have a chance to like deload what we just learned and yeah and it wasn't like we're you know it was it was just kind of a light kind of thing we all took notes and then you know came back and gave a like, presentation oh, on it but this thing was this thing really that they did cool. was awesome. Yeah, this so, was such a great idea. We should implement it. <laughs> yeah, she attended obviously the technical brewing side of things, yeah. and I did more of the marketing and and um, front of house kind side. of management yeah. side of stuff. Yeah. And just crazy how Georgia craft beer is really banded together, especially since they uh, ended prohibition, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Yeah, um, Georgia's got a lot of work to do though. This is, I mean, it's pretty ridiculous what we have to go through to be a brewery. So, yeah. is there a capital craft brewery? place like you know what i'm saying like is washington considered like what is like the capital of craft beer i think or that's is changing so every year now like really I, I, denver I like denver's like the old school mm-hmm. like beer mecca yeah uh or craft beer mecca um asheville Asheville's is, up there. is uh, yeah asheville's definitely chasing denver might pass them up but yeah. charlotte like regionally yeah, yeah. charlotte's blowing up it's huge charleston's getting charleston's huge. fantastic um columbia Columbia, South River, Carolina. Have y'all been to River Rat? No, but I've heard very good things. River Rat, the beer is it's pretty dang good, yeah. but the atmosphere is really cool. I it's like an old Angry silo Fish. that they hollowed out and put like a stairwell in, and it's oh, that so really cool. Yeah. I um, love Angry Fish in Columbia. Angry Fish? Okay, yeah. yeah. I a huge fan of Monday Night Garage. Like, just, yeah. I, I sing their <laughs> praises because it's just such a cool facility. Um, but just in Thomas Creek today, they've been around for 23 years, and it was like, just my like we were, I remember we rolled up. My husband was like, "Of course he." He was like, "This is this." Of course and he was like joking yeah, me. He's like, "Of it's course you picked the brewery warehouse. that's like not even downtown." And I was like, "You don't understand. That's a very good sign. That means they've been here for a really long time. Probably before it was legal to open a brewery downtown, which means they know what they're doing." So I highly recommend breweries. 
especially in the southeastern states, because we are way behind of the times. A Look for the breweries the that are track. a little bit out of town, and that's going to be the older brewery, and they're going to know what they're doing, I promise. That's an interesting take, because my boss said the same thing about barbecue joints. He said, if there's yeah. a barbecue joint in the middle of BFE, yep. and it's still up and running, and they only run like maybe Thursday through Saturday, you know it's good, yeah. because oh, yeah. that means they got a lot of people coming through to support that yeah i mean what's that's an interesting take though i like that yeah what's not about it is it's like a direct um response to the archaic beer laws in georgia but at the same time i mean if you're looking for good craft beer i definitely recommend like go to the industrial district you find a brewery in the industrial district they they are not afraid to get down there they trust they trust their beer because they couldn't get the location yeah so that's i Specifically for Richmond County. You I mean, look could, at us. Yeah, exactly. You and could Riverwatch. not. You had to be in a light industrial area. And so SRBC and Riverwatch opened you know, a little bit off of downtown. Uh, and then right after both were open, the city commission was like, oh, well, we're going to change our requirements. And now you can be downtown. It's like, well, we're already open and yeah. everything's moved in. So Thanks we're not moving. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So that's kind of the frustrating, it's the frustrating part about it, but it is kind of neat to see, like, I don't know, for me, it's very romantic because it's like, oh, the, the industry will catch up and we'll just, we'll, you know, yeah, be the first, I guess, or not the first, but you know, I, it'd be amazing to have, you know, six or seven breweries, like just in roughly downtown yeah. and then we, you know, get a beer bus going. So, uh, one of my first trips to Asheville, I ran out for my, my boyfriend and I at the time, uh. We did a beer bus tour, mm-hmm. and so we got to go to, like, four different breweries, and you have, like, two beers at each brewery, and, well, now your DD is already taken care of. And it was it was such an awesome time, and with some of the places you got to talk to the brewers or whatever, uh, it might be some other, other upper management, but it was it was so cool. And I it, it didn't matter if something was farther out because there's a bus taking me. Uh, so I'd, I'd love to make that happen, and, you know, you know, they stop at SRBC, they stop at Riverwatch, and then they stop at you know, Tap 33 and, and Back Paddle, and hopefully more places show up and we can, exist, make yeah. This, yeah. we can make this a whole thing. Well, uh, I think that I think that cities, um, and it, this kind of circles back to the Columbia County thing, I think that people underestimate the tourism that craft beer brings. These aren't just a bunch of people just getting drunk at breweries. Uh, typically, that comes with a run club who also, like, run club, dog adoption events, like, yeah, breweries, people that go to breweries, they want to give back to you. So you've got this untapped market for beer tourism and y'all are right here off the I-20. Like it would be oh, yeah. nothing for someone to be riding through from, I don't know, Columbia to Atlanta to stop off and right here. Like, I mean, cause there's like what, a few exits that are like, there's Columbia County and then right down to Riverwatch. Oh, I, That's what New York I, did with what I said, the, the brewery, the brew tour or whatever. Yeah. It's like from... And that's a good six-hour drive from, like, the city yeah. to where I'm from, western New York. I, there's so many breweries, and it's just, like, stopped along the way. It's the so The revenue cool. for cities and just, like, a lot of, like, brewery tourism. I mean, Asheville. I mean, like, that's the obvious choice. Or, like, Denver to talk about. But then you look at cities like Greenville, who's emerging mm-hmm. as this, like, small business-friendly craft beer. Oh, my God. Was there for the first time today? We'll be going back. Eight it's awesome. Like, it was so it's cool. awesome, man. But, like, you look at, I mean, different, like, there are a lot of smaller cities who've caught on, and they're starting to um, promote and foster that type of growth within their communities, and they're doing great. And that's the problem. I just think that, I think that we're a little lost in the times, especially down south, of what will and will not work. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just think there's room for growth. So, like, for brewery tourism thing, like, my a lot of my family is up in the Midwest, so my dad and I will drive to go visit up there that's all i do when i leave town i'm like where's but i'm also like all right we know that lexington kentucky is roughly the halfway point and that's a good switch driver point so it's all right you know whoever was driving first uh gets to have you're you're no longer uh driving uh you can partake uh we'll grab lunch the whoever is taking over the drive maybe gets like a light beer and lunch and water yeah (laughs) and then you, you take over and it's we we map out our trip to be like all right well in one year we did Cincinnati Ohio instead of Lexington which was it was great uh, yeah. there's like oh there's not there's way more breweries here than I realized and okay let's go try this this time instead yeah this is uh, a good anecdote for that too and like the community and stuff today we were at, like at 
again, Thomas Creek is like off the highway. It's not like downtown. And we were sitting there and it was like one thirty in the afternoon. We were like, we'll get one beer. We had lunch and we'll head home and to get ready for this. And, um, this couple comes walking around the corner and I'm like, those people look so familiar. And they walk up and it's people that I met at Savannah River Brewing Company that used to live here in Augusta, Georgia. And they were driving from Anderson to uh, West Virginia or Virginia, Richmond, Virginia, where they live now. And literally just sat and had a beer with them. And I haven't seen them in two years. <laughs> yeah. And they were like good friends of mine. Like my husband have gone out with them and stuff like that. And we like obviously didn't, tr- no one had any idea that right, we were right, both right. going to be sliding through green. I mean, that's just an idea of what craft beer culture can do. And, yeah, and because absolutely. of that, we sat down and hung out together and. I don't know. Yeah, it's just like today I was like, like, it's crazy. (laughs) That's a great example of what I mean is the community is just so strong and so strongly tied. Um, I'm going to leave this last question. Both of you guys can answer it in any way you want. If you could change one thing about the craft brewery industry or craft beer industry, what would it be? Whoever can start first. Doesn't matter to me. Rock, paper, scissors. No. (laughs) (laughs) You've been in it longer than me. Um. Two different things. So, like, the the state laws could just get with the times. And I'm not even just talking about Georgia. It's it's a lot of states. Get with the times. And, like, you're missing out on tox, tax dollars. So, I mean, come on. Yeah. Uh, make it more friendly for breweries or distilleries or... Uh, coffee roasteries. Uh, coffee. Kombucha it, places. Wineries. Yeah. Yeah. Kim, make like, it, fermentation. Place, figment yeah. fermentation in Athens. Can yeah. Can we please get that here? Yeah. Um, just you're missing out on tax revenue. So mm-hmm. make it a little bit more, I don't, I don't want to say easy to open, but not, not such a pain. Accessible yeah. uh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that there's that side. And then there's also for me being a, a woman brewer, uh, some of these old farts need to get with the times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of these guys that have been in the homebrew industry f- or the craft beer industry, since the seventies, all right. Well, I'm sorry, your your taste buds are a little muted. So maybe it's time to retire from judging. You've been a smoker for thirty years. Uh, palates, that's yeah. gonna have an uh, impact on your palate. Really? Uh, yeah, for sure. I Absolutely. Smoking is horrible yeah. for your palate. That's big news. I didn't know that. Uh, so and right. and these Quit, guys that are like eighty years old, seventy years old, that are still craft beer. Yeah judges for these massive competitions it's hey pass on your knowledge but you know maybe take a back seat <laughs> let some new blood come in and new blood like you have to actually be interested in going in judging mm-hmm. or um it's still experiment and 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 do the fun different beers and do the crazy the really crazy beers i i'm trying to like the coconut vanilla chocolate uh, raspberry, Oof. uh, sour IPA, like absolutely still do those, but know your, know your basics as well and mm-hmm. be able to be able to make a good basic. I like that. Taylor. Um, I agree with Anne. I think that legislation needs to be improved at the local and national level. Um, I just full stop needs to happen. Um, more so for me personally, um, is empowering women and, uh, people of color to get into craft beer. Specifically, it's been, uh, well, historically it's been traditionally just a very, uh, exclusive industry for people. And it's not always been the easiest place for a woman to work in craft beer. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, you could... You could do your own research and get into the last year in craft beer when it comes right. to yeah. There's in the last like year and a on. half, there was essentially a, a Me Too movement. There was a come, yeah. It was it was uh, in in craft beer specifically, um, um, and I think that most really? women that have been in craft beer for a very long time can identify with the frustration of it being a man's game. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that if you want the beers to stay interesting and the community to grow and you want people to invest their livelihoods into opening breweries and you need to empower more than just one demographic to do so. I mean, like um, the whole 
male dominated industry for beer is hysterical considering it was women that started actually start we're the brewing. first brewers we're the first beer, beer, beer like, like yeah really it was yeah. you're yeah. waiting to drop that knowledge now yeah no for real <laughs> what? like she needs yeah, to like so. let me I'll, I'll like i'll finish answering but please please talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. because it is like your and ex- her knowledge of like the inception of craft beer like i was like yeah girl power like this is stupid <laughs> this is always a women's game get out of the kitchen like yeah it was like yeah but i do think that um i think that generally it's it's just been it's been a pretty exclusive environment and um i will say that eight years ago when i was in the craft beer industry it was a completely different ball game mm-hmm. i've personally felt nothing but support i got extremely lucky with savannah river and and we are always trying to ask the right questions and make sure that everybody's feeling included and supported and on top of that we're investing in female brewers and promoting female brewers that are more than qualified of course <laughs> but still you know taking that talent and educating and empowering and allowing them to run with it. And I think that that's super important. And I think that if you want, uh, you know, if you want this industry to succeed, you're going to have to market to more than just one demographic. So, yeah. yeah. Um, more inclusivity and in craft beer would be great, which at place cities like Atlanta, amazing Georgia craft brewers guild this year. That was a huge topic of conversation. We got to hear from a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds about their thoughts and a lot of people that were already in craft beer and, and what they thought about it. And I, just felt very lucky to be get to be in a room with them and listen. So, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. I could go on forever yeah. about <laughs> beer. That's that's the thing. So, um, I'm gonna cut it there. Why don't you guys take however much time you want to do and plug whatever it is you want to plug? Uh, so I, I don't know when this is being released, but like this Saturday we are doing the finale of our 12 beers of Christmas. So we're going to have all 12 small batches plus our year-round beers. Uh, we'll have a seltzer, a soda. So we'll only have one empty tap at the brewery, and that'll be one of the nitros because I can only actually do one nitro at a time. Uh, but every single tap will be filled, and the majority of that will be small batch specialty stuff. Uh, cool. Uh, so that's, that's exciting. Uh, and then we've got our anniversary is coming up in February. Uh, and it's our five year anniversary, so that's that's gonna be a real big event. Uh, yeah, we're excited. <laughs> uh, BK three is coming out. Blackie Kong three. Um, Taylor said that like she knew something. I was just I, like, I'm, I know blanking. I'm blanking. I'm <laughs> blanking. Sorry. Okay, I'll go. I'll go then if you want. Um, yeah. So yeah, fifth year anniversary is amazing. Um, we're really excited about that. I think it's Fred and Perry. Yeah, it'll be kind of a Ren Fair thing right, again. We're yeah. all we're all a bunch of nerds. Yeah, so, so. stay in like um, obviously we'll, have, we'll probably we're trying to get the fire dancers back. We're trying to get uh, there's a medieval MMA like, MMA MMA and they like fight and they hold fight up, with like yeah. you yeah. said medieval, medieval MMA? MMA. They're it, they're great. <laughs> they like that? they they have a bo- a ring and they wear. Like, medieval yeah. garb and, and they fight and, and like it's real amazing. weapons this and is they crazy. Are, like swords yeah. and everything it's amazing so yeah i recommend that um so they're we're trying February? to get them to come back for that yeah. so i don't remember the exact date i can look it up real quick yeah but, um, y'all are dropping bombs dude, in the yeah. late part of this episode um <laughs> yeah so i guess i'll what do you have the date um I'm, I'm scrolling it's fine um <laughs> You can also follow us on facebook and instagram for that it's savannah river brew is our uh handle so February 19th. February 19th, fifth anniversary. Yeah. Um, also, if you want to come to Beer Yoga, it's every Saturday at 1130. Um, it is 16 for the class. It includes your first beer. Anybody can do it. Uh, I promise anybody. Everybody's always like, okay, is it really anybody? It is anybody. I think can my do first it. time I was massively hungover and I still survived. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So that, um, I'm Yoga with Taylor on Instagram. Uh, there's not a whole lot of yoga content, but as far as craft beer is concerned, and just kind of that's that's the easiest place to get in touch with me for questions about yoga. Um, Run Club is every Saturday at Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. shit, sorry. <laughs> uh, Sundays at 10:30. Run Club's fantastic. We run about three miles around downtown Augusta. Um, you get a free beer for coming to that for participating. Um, and I can't say enough. I got to shout out my Run Club people, like Alex, Devin, Kyle. They all know who they are. I just Absolutely fantastic community. They're the nicest human beings. Um, one, what started as one large table of people hanging out for a run club has now turned into two very large tables, and and people are going out and hanging out on their own and stuff. So, um, yeah, if you can, just come join the community. It's, there's room for everybody. 
once once Ansley gets off of maternity leave. Oh, yeah, functional uh, fitness. So at the beginning of the year, uh, functional fitness will come back. That's normally on Monday nights, and it's 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 a basic fitness class. Um, you can either do it with weights or with, with not, um, and she provides those, and it's just you come work out, a light half-hour workout, and then have a beer afterwards. Yeah. And then um, – we're trying to get together a, a homebrew club as well. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I think social media is just like the easiest thing. Just yeah. follow us there. Do you have a, a social media, Ann? Or is it just um, SRBC? I don't have a necessarily as me as a brewer. Um, I do have a Facebook kind of a blog. It's Adventures uh, of a Modern Ale Wife, which gets back to that. Right. Brewing was originally women. Uh, that's uh, ale wife was what female brewers were kind of called in like England and that. Uh, that was how women were able to make money for their family when their husbands were off crusading. <laughs> so. Jeez. And I ever like her. She's an impeccable writer and she writes a lot about her personal experiences as a brewer and it gives a really cool insight, especially it's, as a it's female. Not always, yeah. It's not always about beer. Sometimes it's just like personal. I just, yeah, I, it, I've got something on my mind, and I feel like I'm not the only one dealing with this kind of issue, so I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a, it's a great place to kind of, if you wanted to get inside Anne's brain and how you're, like, not even, like, I feel like, I feel like you brew with your emotions, too. I feel like. Oh, that, absolutely. Even <laughs> though it's, like, not all beer related, I feel like it always ties back to, like, what you do and your passion and stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I'll tag all those in the description for when this comes out, so. Sweet. Too easy. All righty. Uh, again, Taylor, and thank you so much for coming and doing this, uh, sharing the beer. It was amazing. I learned a lot. The alewife thing is still blowing my mind. Um, that's it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. It.